Of all the islands in the oceans of the world, one group, more than any other, has changed the way people look at the planet and the forces that shape it. The Galapagos Islands, the Enchanted Islands, the Islands of Fire, located in the Pacific Ocean, about a thousand kilometers offshore from Ecuador. As a young man, Charles Darwin visited there in 1835 and was amazed by the creatures he saw, giant tortoises, flightless cormorants, iguanas, all living side by side with fur seals and penguins right on the equator. It became his laboratory for the study of the origins of life. What Darwin did not see were the Galapagos Islands underwater. If you fly over them, you can see 19 big islands and dozens of rocky islets projecting above the water's surface. But if you could hitch a ride on a turtle or a whale, or could imagine draining away the surrounding Pacific Ocean, you would see the real Galapagos Islands, a chain of undersea mountains, a submerged archipelago that stretches for hundreds of miles and hosts a lively assemblage of underwater plants and animals, including many that live there and only there. Deep, cold ocean currents converge under the equatorial sun, a natural living laboratory on the land and in the surrounding sea. In 1977, Northeast of the Galapagos Islands and about 2,000 meters down, scientists discovered hot water vents connected to the core of the Earth, a discovery that brought radical new insight into how the world is formed. Amazingly, the hydrothermal vents supported a food chain not dependent on the energy of the sun, but on chemical energy from the heart of the Earth, specifically hydrogen sulfide. Microbes gather near the vents on the sea floor and feed off the warm, mineral-rich water welling up from the Earth's mantle. The microbes thrive in the deep blackness of the sea, surrounded by creatures that in turn feed off them. Dozens of small, medium, and rather large creatures not previously known to exist. When Darwin arrived on the Galapagos, no people lived on the islands, but whalers and pirates had already depleted the tortoises, turtles, and many of the birds that had no fear of humans and could easily be picked up and eaten. By the 1960s, a few thousand people had settled there and efforts were underway to protect the nature of the islands as something important not only to the people of Ecuador, but to the world. The land and surrounding ocean are now recognized as World Heritage Sites, and 97% of the land above the ocean surface is protected as a national park. In 1998, some of the surrounding sea was also designated as a marine reserve, but the pressures from the now 30,000 residents and more than 100,000 annual visitors and an international market for its marine wildlife are causing problems for all of the creatures on the islands, including its people. There is still a chance here to glimpse the past and to plan a future where people can find ways to take care of the natural world that takes care of us. Mm -hmm.